Well, hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome you to another broadcast, Faith Baptist Church. Faith Baptist Church located at 205 East Main Street in Lagodi, Indiana. Uh, we come to you each Wednesday with a Bible study, try to uh, be a source of encouragement to you in the midweek. I don't know about you, but by this time, all the cares of the world are really starting to weigh up on me. And it's good to call a time out and to get into the Word and, and examine and look a little deeper. Well, to, we, as many of you know, we're in a Christology series. And Christology just means studying the life of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at one of the facts about Jesus that uh, uh, I don't think we illustrate enough. And, and as a pastor, I guess I'd be the one in the, in the blank. Uh, but I want to tonight, and that's looking at Jesus reigns above all. Reign means supreme rule. There's nothing happens in this universe that God isn't in charge of. Now, I know when I say that, people's minds start racing. You think about all the evil, the rapes, and, and, and the crimes, and the murders, and the shootings, and all this stuff races in. And you say, that can't be God. Now, I didn't say God was in charge of sin, but he's in charge of the world. And he's bringing it all to a organized, controlled uh, reign of Christ. He's coming back one day. Uh, and he will be Lord of Lords and King of Kings, which he is now, but he will be here on this earth. But let's, let's look a little deeper into that once again. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope you've had a good day. And uh, here we are, the, the last Wednesday of January. It wasn't too long ago you were making plans for Christmas. And it seemed like everything just races. I start planning a little bit to go after the deer. And, and next thing you know, here comes the Thanksgiving holiday, and here comes the Christmas holiday, and, and then the first of the year, and you're redoing all that stuff in the midst of tax season, all these things that just rotate, rotate. But uh, if you just take your time before you know it, uh, you know, I think you'd agree with me, before you know it, time is race. Look with me, if you would, in Exodus chapter 3, and I would like to read the 13th and 14th verse. We covered this on a Sunday not too many weeks ago. Uh, but uh, Moses was called to God to go and to approach Pharaoh uh, to release the children of Israel uh, because God had chosen that people to be a theocracy. A theocracy is a, is a government under the rule of God. And I know that... Uh, uh, once again, from that earlier statement, all governments are, but you know what I'm going. In America, we are a democratic uh, republic. We uh, vote for our leaders, so we, uh, we select our leaders and we have citizen government. And the, uh, in Romans, it says when that vote takes place, and it's, it's never pretty, is it? Oh my gosh, it's never pretty. Uh, but once that vote takes place, that we need to accept those in leadership are of God. God, uh, Romans tells us uh, that, uh, Romans 13, that there's no one in authority except that God overseen it. And so, and that, that leads to some uh, questions too, so we'll just skip right over that. Uh, but read with me, starting in verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, uh, this is Exodus 3, 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Moses said, When I go to these children, when I go and say, Hey, God just sent me, they're going to ask, What's his name? And look what God said. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children, I am hath sent me unto you. You see, Moses asked God for his name. Uh, and when God said that he was I am, these words represent an unchanging and eternal being. He's, he's self-contained. Uh, there is no one... Uh, to match God. You know, if, if you, in mathematics, we have the greater than and, and the 
lesser than symbol. And uh, it, no matter what you put, uh, God is the greater it then. And uh, so God is in control. He reigns supreme. And uh, so hold your marker there and turn to Revelation uh, chapter 1. That's all the way in the back of your Bible. Revelation chapter 1. And I'd like to read verse 4 and verse 8. And it says, John to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be on you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Did you see it? It says, peace from him which is, that's current, which was past, and which is to come present. God has always existed. You see, as I am, he has always existed. And uh, all of duration, the Alpha and Omega, another section says, look at verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. Now verse 8 uh, plays off uh, the uh, previous verse, verse 4 that I read to you, but I have red letter edition. And so God himself is one since I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and ending. Uh, God begins everything, God ends everything. There is no change. And so we see that. Almighty, he calls himself the Almighty. He has all power. He can accomplish anything that he wills. There's nothing that can stop God that he wills to do. The only thing that can keep God from doing something is that God wills not to do it. Uh, nobody can fully understand that. You and I, uh, there's so many things we're limited to. Uh, right next to Faith Baptist Church is a, uh, is a gym. They go in there and lift those weights. Uh, you know, they, it, I see them snacks the same cars over and over. And uh, I used to lift some weights, but I quit. Them things are heavy. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're lifting weights, uh, you, you will always reach a point you can't lift any further. Now, the weightlifters, bodybuilders, whatever you call them, they keep extending themselves. They're wanting to lift a little more and a little more, and they stretch themselves. But even the quote, quote, world's strongest man, uh, there's limitations. I mean, you can only go so far, right? And then you can't go any further. And, uh, but that's not so with God. Uh, God can go as far as he wills to go. There's nothing stopping him, but he, that, that he, he doesn't, uh, unless he wills not to. You know, that's like it, uh, when he hung on Calvary, do you remember that, uh, reading that illustration? And the critics were saying, he could save others, but he can't save himself. And, you know, if you be God, come down from there. Now, I want to ask you something. Uh, if you've studied the scripture at all, and, and the fact you're tuned in tonight tells me you're at least interested in spiritual things. And by this point, if you spend any time at all uh, researching Jesus Christ, you know that he had the power to bring himself off the cross. Matter of fact, he did something much greater than bringing himself off the cross. Three days later, he brought himself out of the grave. Now that's a task. Uh, in 30-some years, I've stood by a lot of uh, tear-filled people uh, putting their loved one in the ground. Uh, last year, I did that myself. I, and so uh, we go that course, and we go through, and, and, and we struggle, if you would. And, uh, but you know, put them bodies in, and Jesus will be bringing them out someday. But nobody goes back to see if they're still there. Nobody goes back expecting them not to be there. Uh, but with Jesus, when he went in the grave, he, he just borrowed. It was actually a borrowed tomb. You got to pay for a funeral plot. You got to pay for hey, that stuff can add up. But I, I don't know if they, uh, you know, uh, scripture said it was a borrowed tomb. And it's a good thing it was because if they'd have paid any, they'd really lost, lost their uh, out, wouldn't they? 
because uh, he didn't stay in there. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not making fun of, of the fact that people buy uh, places to bury their, their loved ones. I, th I think that's wise stewardship and uh, to, to have those things. But uh, also, uh, the Lord, uh, you know, he teaches by illustrations and with all authority. He is a sovereign king. As Lord, he is a ruler of all things, isn't he? The title of the Lord is found hundreds of times in the Bible to describe him. The Lord means above all. Uh, you know, uh, there are human beings that get that title, and, and we give them that title that, to show that they have authority. Now, I, I'm going somewhere with this. I don't think they should have that title. But, uh, but yet they're not Lord. They're not above all. You know, it, it, every human being, the best of men are men at best. I don't care what the spiritual title, I know that I hold the title as pastor, Pastor Jim, Faith Baptist Church. And the spiritual leadership of Faith Baptist Church, I'm responsible for, we all get that. But I, I hope you understand, I know my wife knows this and my children know this, I'm just a man. Uh, I, I don't always do what I need to do and I don't I always act proper and so I'm just a man but God wasn't just a man he was Lord he was Lord of all and and so we see that and then uh, man's eternal destiny rests on his view of Christ's Lordship turn back to Romans chapter 5 with me would you do that Romans the fifth chapter and I like to read the 12th and the 19th verse. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, uh, nobody gets exempt from this. The whole class is guilty of sin. But look with me if you're in verse 19. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Did you see that? Uh, Adam brought sin upon us. Jesus made uh, the uh, sacrifice for sin possible. Every human heart needs the blood atonement. If you're listening to me tonight and you're saying something's missing in my life, I got a raise at work, wife has been kind, children doing well, everything's right, but I'm missing something. And, and what you are missing, and what you're missing above everything else, is, is a relationship with Jesus Christ. I was at a pastor's conference several years ago, and the uh, Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow was speaking at that pastor's conference, uh, if you recall, uh, Tim Tebow was from Florida, and that was actually his home church that I was at. It's First Baptist Church, Jacksonville, Florida, and that's where Tim Tebow went to church. And he was still, uh, still at the University of Florida when he spoke, still playing collegiate ball. But Florida had just won a national championship, and Tim was talking about after that national championship, he was sitting with one of his teammates and and they were celebrating, everybody was having a good time, as you can imagine. And, uh, but his teammate looked at Tim and, and told him, uh, you know, we just won a national championship and I should be so happy and so excited, but, but uh, I just feel empty, like nothing's happened. And Tim Tebow said he led that young man to Christ and, and he showed him what he was missing. So, you know, uh, no matter what you have in life, that's, that's not going to make you complete. It's Jesus Christ who makes us complete. And so uh, the word of God leaves no doubt. Jesus of Nazareth was Jehovah, Lord, King, Yahweh. Uh, Jesus has heavenly origin. And that's where he's taken us. Now we're going to see that a whole host of people are going to roar his praise one day. Revelation 19.6 uh, you know, his lordship is unlimited. I want you to know that. It's unlimited. His lordship is opposed, imposed upon all. He overcomes every enemy. 
and a covenant and brings the world to his feet. Right now there's some people strutting around and, uh, and I heard the other day somebody they were losing their mind because uh, there was a, a government official who, who had the audacity uh, to declare something in Jesus Christ's name. And, and the, you know what they did? Uh, they, they just said, oh no, you can't claim that name. Well, you better claim it now uh, why you can because you're going to claim it someday uh, you are one of one of the athletes that was in the uh, NFL playoff system he's an extreme uh, extremely good athlete but he's also a, a highly highly committed believer and he had actually given credit to his performance to his Savior Jesus Christ and it became record uh, that, that that got edited out of his interview not when it was live, but when it went back into, they, they did some highlights and recordings. Uh, they were afraid. People are afraid to use the name of Jesus. But I can tell you right now, don't be afraid to use the G name of Jesus, especially if he's your Lord. Because there's come a day every time it's going to confess him as Lord. But for many, it's going to be too late. Uh, boy, I, I get talking about that stuff. I get fired up. Not It's too late for them. But the fact that Jesus Christ will get his due. Uh, there's not a human being that will not acknowledge him as Lord. Uh, now, as Lord, he is head of all. Yahweh, God Almighty, the true God. You know, he's God of all of creation, of le every living human being, and of the true and spiritual church. Well, I hope this has been a source of encouragement to you tonight. It's encouraged me. Uh, I was down a little bit and all that, getting tired midweek, you know, the old hump day. Uh, but, but this stuff fires me up to talk about my Jesus in this sense and your Jesus, I hope. But if you don't know Jesus, make him Lord of your life. He's Lord of all. Why don't you just say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of me. Uh, oh, you'll, you'll never regret it. You'll never regret turning your life over to Jesus. Well, we love you. We thank you so much for listening. Let's close in word of prayer. Father, it is our prayer, it's our desire that you be with each person listening here tonight. Uh, we thank you for uh, being the Lord of the universe, and we ask that you would, uh, even so, Lord, just show, give each one of us the ability to surrender our lives to your Lordship. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.